Hi, I'm Kenya Woodard. I'm here in Palm Coast at the home of post Harlem Renaissance artist Georgette Seabrook Powell. Mrs. Powell, who is 92, moved to Palm Coast after a groundbreaking career as a member of the Harlem Arts Workshop in the 1930s, and then 40 years later for pioneering the practice of art therapy for the mentally ill in Washington, D.C. Georgette was born in Charleston, South Carolina, August the 2nd, 1916. In the 1930s, Powell was among several artists commissioned by the WPA to paint murals for Harlem Hospital. But its administrator rejected several proposed murals. The director of the hospital said he didn't uh, want any black faces on the walls. Among his reasons was his claim that blacks might not form the greater part of the community in 25 years. He said a couple of people didn't uh, live there. And he, and most everyone admitted to Harlem Hospital. Members of the Harlem Arts Guild staged protests. The story hit the press, and the hospital bosses relented. Mrs. Powell painted her murals. Independent curator Michelle Black Smith sponsored an exhibit of Powell's work and studied her career. Georgette felt strongly that her work portrayed the people she saw around her. Um, and it was a mixture of people uh, at that time, mainly black and white, not to exclude other cultures, but uh, Harlem looked very black and white at that time. In 2005, Harlem Hospital announced the murals would be restored and displayed prominently in a $225 million expansion wing beginning in 2011. We made history. <laughs> you did make history. At many ways, you know. Georgette has an uncanny ability to, um, I, I think, grasp what is sort of the the temperature of the times, like mm -hmm. what the community is feeling, what mm -hmm. people are feeling, and she's able to express that, mm -hmm. and she's been able to do it in many different media and over many different periods. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Georgette has an amazing sense of empathy. Mm, okay. She's able to cast herself in the role of the person she represents. And I think that when people come to her work, they also come away with that feeling, that they're able to look at a painting and see something of themselves in it or see something of something someone that they know. Well, let's talk about some of these um, specific uh, paintings, especially church scene. Um, I mean, is it me, or when you look at it, you can hear the choir going, you can hear the people shouting, you know, all of these things just kind of jump out at you. That it's almost as if the painting is moving. Um, oh, it, it's, it's you, and it's so many people who come to that painting. And I've asked Georgette uh, about um, that particular work and, and why... Um, and what inspired her, why church scene. And for her, it was, she said, the movement and the feeling that she wanted to, she wanted to, to capture the joy and the feeling in the expression of people in worship. In the 1970s, Powell pioneered the use of art therapy at facilities for the mentally challenged in Washington. Art therapy is for a sighted murder. As a mental stimulus, I'd say, and uh, it doesn't matter whether you have undergone a, a, a mental treatment or not. I think it's an asset. She also promoted art within the African American community and created works like "But for the Grace of God" as a comment on homelessness. Stuff while you were in Washington, yeah. you had an opportunity to open up your own gallery, your own art studio. Yeah. You had an opportunity to have a Art in the Park feature, yeah, yeah. which you did for 36 years, yeah, yeah. where you had a, where you where you encouraged artists to come out in the park and exhibit their work yes, and paint in the work. Okay, yeah. so you provided an opportunities for some of the younger artists. And so she becomes very, very active in the black arts movement of the 1960s and 70s. And that's a time when the black power movement is very strong. And the kind of people who come through um, Georgette's organizations, um, she begins in the parking lot of a, of a grocery store in those days when stores were closed on Sundays. And she 
gathers the community to show art. And she gets children involved in creating art. And then she begins an art center with her youngest son, Rick, who is a musician. I have a latest now that uh, have been written to me. Well, when it was a, people I met just a few years back. Her name is a a a Annie. Mm -hmm. you know? Annie, okay. Yeah, and uh, she says, you have been my mentor, and I don't think I would be doing it if I had not met you. <laughs>